and you'll see that we've now completed the first part which was creating a cross tool chain compiling cross tool chain now that we've built that we're going to create some cross compiling temporary tools so these are tools we've got the basic tool chain which allows us to compile stuff these tools will allow us to do a little bit more um, some packages need them to compile the tool chains are fairly standalone uh, but like I say these allow a little more a little bit more to be done in preparation for the final Linux from scratch system and it says here that this chapter shows you how to cross compile basic utilities using the cross compile uh, cross tool chain that's just been built these utilities are installed into their final position but cannot be used yet basic tasks rely on the host tools so we're still relying on the host tools for certain things such as make for example because we haven't compiled make yet but that's one of the things we're going to be doing now and the reason is that as it says there when we enter truth we won't have access to the host utilities because the truth will become the real root and there'll be no reference to the host root as there is at the moment so it's the first major step in uh, creating an environment that's independent from the host system once again let's recall that improper setting of LFS together with building as root may render your computer unusable so we're still LFS and again let's just check we've still got the LFS variable set as well so let's proceed with the first of these temporary tools that we're going to com compile for use in our own environment in the true environment and the first one's called M4 and many of these tools are quite tiny so they don't take long uh, you'll spend more time typing and copying and pasting than you will waiting for the uh, computer to do stuff more than likely so that's built let's install it and it's done tidy up and move on to the next package which is n curses so I've got a little fix and then these commands I'll put them in one at a time we could put them in all at once but they're gonna put a load of stuff to the screen so rather than risk missing something I'm gonna copy them all individually I'll advise you to do the same just to ensure nothing unexpected happens so that looks okay build the first part and we'll build the second part that's done pop D takes us back to where we were and now we can actually build and curses first prepare it for compilation and build the package that's all done we can install it with this command here and put that command in as well to finish off and that's done tidy that up and move on to the next package we're going to build which is bash so pair of compilation with configure command build it with make and install it with this instruction here and we make a sim link to sh so that any programs that use sh for a shell will uh, actually have a shell available so tidy that up and we move on to core utils 
Right, okay, so here the file name isn't completed. I've been in too much of a hurry to see that. And you can see there's an error that's been created. So I need to press tab a couple of times. And you can see there's two patches associated with core utils. So once again, I'll just put a full stop in and that will allow me to complete the actual package file name. And of course, allow the package to be extracted correctly. Configure. Again, each of these commands have got a description of what's going on. So this is how you can learn more about how Linux from scratch is built and why they do things the way they do. Build it with make again. And install the package. Finally, we've got some packages to move. I'm going to copy all these commands all at once because they're not going to produce a lot of output. So if there was anything wrong, all I'll do is just quickly scan down the here, see if there's any issues. Note that looks fine. So tidy up and move on to the next package, which is diffutils. Uh, quite a straightforward set of commands here. These are pretty standard for building packages. You'll see quite a few packages built in the same way, or very similar, if not identical. So that's diffutils done. Now we move on to file. Right, so this needs um, to be built to ensure that the host has got the same version by the looks of it. So I'm going to copy these in one at a time again. Because the configure command will produce lots of output, as will the make command. So I want to ensure that there's no errors. No, that looks fine. And that looks fine. Now can prepare file for compilation and actually build it. And here you can see it's specifying the file binary that we just built up here. So that's why it's ensuring it's got to be the same version. So now that's built, we can install. That's done. There was a little error. Oh, it's a warning. Okay. I saw something red flash past. Not a problem. We'll just carry on. Tidy that up and move on to the next package, which is find utils. And here we've got this configure command to run to prepare the build. Then we build the package and finally install it. And lastly, as usual, tidy up. Next we've got Gork. So once again extract it, change into the subdirectory that was created. And then we can follow the commands. So first of all, we've got a little fix. And then we can run the configure command. Followed by make to build it. And install the package. Tidy it up. And move on to grep. Right, okay. I didn't put the V in, so that's why nothing came up, but it did do the job properly. So there's the source. Let's configure it to build.
build it and install it. Tidy that up and move on to the next package, gzip. Uh, grep gzip. Once again, you can see these are quite standard commands we're putting in here. We've seen this at least once before. And each time I'm pasting these commands in, I'm just checking that A, that I've copied them correctly, that I've not missed any characters off the beginning and the end, and also when the command is completed, that there's no errors that have been produced. So that's gzip, let's move on to make. Oops. So again, we've got the configure command. Compile it and install it. And let's make complete. Next we've got patch. Same again, we've got configure command to prepare the build. A make command which does the actual building or steers the building and the install and it's complete. So we'll tidy up. Move on to said. Again, configure. Make to build and make to install it. Tidy up. And move on to tile. You'll notice one thing when I'm moving on. I'm scrolling to the bottom of the screen and using the link at the bottom of the screen. Sometimes, depending on the package, there may be other commands to run. And if I use the, so although I think might think that make install is the final command, if I clicked on the link here to move on to the next package, I would miss anything that was at the bottom here. So it's a good tip to scroll down right to the bottom of the page and use the link at the bottom of the page to move on just to ensure that nothing's been missed, no no extra pack, uh, commands that have been missed. So for example, in this one, at the top of the page, I can't see what else there is below. In this case, there's only details, but I couldn't see that. But by scrolling down, I can see that that is another link. Um, and then I'll be using this link down here to move on to the next package. So we're extracting tar, changing into the directory and again we'll do a configure make to build it and make command to install it and then we can tidy up So now we're on to XZ. Run the configure. Make. And install. And that's complete. So now we move on to bin utils, which we've already done once. As you can see, this is pass two. So it says, um, well, I thought it would explain why we're rebuilding it, but it doesn't. Um, but this is part of the transition. You'll see that GCC is being rebuilt. This is part of the transition into the final system. So this is the second time we'll be building bin utils and GCC, but we'll be rebuilding them again for a third time in the final system. 
Uh, but so this is part of the transition from the host system to the final system. So again, let's start by extracting bin utils. And we've got a set command to run now. And you'll notice this second time we run bin utils, it slight, takes slightly longer. So there's obviously a little bit more work being done. Prepare it with a configure command to build. And then we build it with make. That's done, so install it and tidy it up. And now we move on to the second pass of GCC. So once again, extract it, change into the directory that's been created. Again, I'm going to copy all of these commands at once because they don't produce a lot of output it's easy to see if there has been any errors and that all looks good <clears throat> now I need to copy this command it's only for 64 bit but there's no harm if you run the command in for 32 bit for peace of mind knowing that you haven't actually missed anything now we've got a couple of commands this make the command to create a directory and a symlink that is created as well. Now we run a configure command to prepare the compilation. Uh, how long does this one take? 11 SBU again. Okay. And we run the build with make. Okay, that compiles finished, so I need to install it now with that command and create a sim link to CC so that some packages use CC not knowing exactly what compiler is behind that, but it doesn't matter, they just want access to a compiler irrespective of which compiler is available on the system as default. So that's completed, let's tidy up. That's done, 